Hi, it's time for another session of our grammar drills. And today we're going to be looking at sentence types. The first sentence we're going to look at is the simple sentence. Now, simple sentences are also called main clauses, and they contain a subject, a verb, and sometimes an object. Returning back to our most simple of simple sentences, we have the cat is our subject here. What's it doing? It's the verb. It's sitting. It's sat. And where is it sitting? It's on the mat. So the object is what the, the noun, the cat, is acting upon. And remember how we can vary our punctuation at the end. We can use here uh, a question mark, which changes the whole sound of the sentence. You know, the cat's on the mat, or an exclamation mark. The cat sat on the mat. Okay. So the main thing to remember with simple sentences is that they make sense on their own. They are a complete idea. As I've said, they're also called the main clause. And they tell us one thing that a subject is doing in this case, sitting on the mat. Now, simple sentences are great. And they can be used very effectively in your writing when you're trying to create tension. In this example here, it was midnight. It was silent, it's ooh, spooky, okay? But if that's all you use is simple sentences, there's a danger you can send your readers to sleep, like in this example here. It was midnight, it was silent, the villagers were asleep, a sound was heard, they woke up, a dragon was outside, it blew fire, it landed on the bridge, a knight turned up, he stabbed it with his sword, the dragon died. So you've got a nice narrative there, but oh, boring. So now we need to develop our sentences, our type of sentences, to make it more interesting. And the second one we're going to look at is the compound sentence. Now, compound sentences where you have two simple sentences and they are compounded and put together to make a longer and more interesting sentence. I've introduced the dog into the mix now. So the cat sat on the mat and the dog licked its paws. Two simple sentences, one about the cat, one about the dog, and we've compounded them together with a connective or a conjunction, which is and in this case. Now, if we were to look at these, this sentence here, now both subjects have got equal importance in the sentence. And if we remove that connective, the two sentences which are at the top there, the cat sat on the mat and the dog licked, licked its paws, both make sense on their own. Now, some common connectors we can use, we remember through the mnemonic fanboys, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. However, that's not an exhaustive list. This is a very basic, very um, common connectors that we can use. And finally, the complex sentence. Now, this, because it's complex, it doesn't mean it's scary. And I bet that most of you are doing this in your writing already without even realising it. It's often the case. Let's have a look at it, though. So the complex sentence, what we're doing, we're adding extra information. We're sprinkling those lovely extras onto the simple sentence to make your readers engaged, engaged with your writing. Now, the simple sentence, as I've said, is called the main clause. And that's going to make sense on its own without the extra bit, without the sprinklings. And the extra bit, those sprinklings, is called the subordinate clause. And that doesn't make sense without the main clause. It needs that, that main clause to make sense. Is that making sense? Have a look at this. Let's return back to our um, our cat. There it is. Main clause, sentence, making sense on its own, subject, verb, and object. And subordinate clause is that bit there in the middle. It's giving us extra information about the subject. In this case, that the cat was ginger colored. And it was sat on the mat. It's still the same. The cat is still sitting on the mat, but we've got that extra bit in the middle there to give us extra information. So, there are three different positions that you can put your subordinate clause. Let's take this case about Billy here, and he's running for the bus. So, subject is Billy, that's what the sentence is about. And what's he doing? He's running. So, our verb there is the past tense, and it's ran, and he's running for the bus. And the subordinate clause we're going to use here is as it was raining. Now, if you look at that subordinate clause, as it was raining, it doesn't make sense on its own, does it? So that is the subordinate clause that we're going to use in this case. And it can go in three places, at the start, at the middle, or in the end. Now, at the start, the subordinate clause must be followed by a comma. 
As it was raining, comma, Billy ran for the bus. If we're going to embed it and put it in the middle or, you know, somewhere in, somewhere in the main clause, it's got to be surrounded by commas. So Billy, as it was raining, ran for the bus. And if it's at the end, it does not need to, be, to, to have a comma. Billy ran for the bus as it was raining. So at the start, it needs a comma following it. In the middle, if it's embedded, it's got to be surrounded by commas. And if it's at the end, it doesn't need a comma at all. So what's our take home today? Simple sentence, also known as a main clause. It makes sense on its own and contains a subject and a verb and sometimes an object. A compound sentence, two simple sentences, two main clauses joined together by those lovely fanboys. And a complex sentence is a simple sentence plus a subordinate clause, which gives extra detail. And the subordinate clause doesn't make sense on its own and can come in three locations. At the start, followed by a comma, middle surrounded by a comma, and at the end, without a comma. Thank you very much.